Google Data Studio is a great way to explore data and to share information with uh, teachers and other educators. And we can set this up in a way that um, makes it very easy for, for teachers to use with uh, drop down filters and, and different things. One unique feature of, of Data Studio is the ability to do something called filter by email. When you filter by email, that allows uh, a single row of data to be shared with whatever email address is associated with that. So if you have teachers, if you want teachers to only see their classes or their students, you're able to set that up. The way that you can do that is once you've built your report and you have your uh, resources connected, if you come up to resource, manage added data resources. And once you have your resource here, go to edit. And you'll see this option here where it says filter by email. When you click on this filter data by viewer email, it'll ask you to select the field. And then you just choose the field that has that email address in it. When you click done, then it will set it up so that as people log in, they'll only be able to see information that is for them. However, the downside to filter by email is that you can only choose one email address for each row of data. This can be a problem if you have certain students that you would like for uh, the classroom teacher and a co-teacher or the principal or a counselor to see as well. And so that makes it a little bit complicated. There is now a workaround that we can use to allow multiple email addresses to be associated with one row of, of data. The way of doing this was originally shared by Pablo Philippe. He uh, discovered this way using um, uh, a feature that is normally used in BigQuery and it is now um, applicable to Google Data Studio. So the way to set that up is once you have your report set up, click on any chart that you have created, and we need to create a calculated field. And the way that we do that is by coming down to here where it says add a field. And you can give this field a name. You can call it whatever you would like. I'm going to call mine ACL. And what you do is you type in the formula if. And then we have contains text. And what we are going to do is type in the field that has our email addresses. Mine happens to be called email. So if I start typing that up, it should recognize it. Comma, and then I'm gonna type in this DS. You should see it pop up, user email. So what it's doing is it, it's looking in my column with e, the email column, and it's looking for the person that's logged in. I'm going to move over one space, put a comma. And now I have to select any field within my data. And it is probably best to have a field that you know that there is data throughout um, your entire source uh, in, every call, in every row that you have the data. So I know grade for mine, it has the grade level for every student. So I'm gonna choose that. And then I put a comma. And now what I need to do is tell the, the formula if, so if the, user signs in, they'll see the grade level. If when they sign in, if the grade level is not associated with that user, if that user's email is not there, what is it going to show them? And I just type in the string not for you. And this doesn't matter too much. You can type in whatever string you would like. This just happens to be the one that I use. Now once I have this and I have my field named, I'll go ahead and click Save. And then I will click Done. And in my available fields, you'll notice this calculated field here, ACL. I don't need to add that to any of my tables or anything. It's just there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a filter that will essentially eliminate all of the data that's not associated with the person that logs in. So the way that I do that, I'm still on this chart. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add a filter. And this is simply so I can create a filter. So I am going to call this um, email filter. You can name it whatever you like. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say exclude that calculated field that I just created, ACL. Select a condition where it's equal to, and I'm going to type in that same string that I put in, 
in my calculated field, so not for you. So anywhere it, that email address is not there, I want to exclude that information. I click Save. And it has now applied that to this table. So it doesn't look like anything has changed, and that's fine. I'm going to actually go ahead and delete this filter from this table. And what I will do now is I will apply that filter to the entire report. In order to apply it to the entire report, I'm going to choose a blank area on my uh, canvas here, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go into Report Settings. When I go into Report Settings, I can come over here to Report Filter, and go ahead and add that filter to my entire report. And maybe you have seen that the total number of students, for example, switched to 19. The available information is only 19 students now because the account that I'm signed in with is, is set up for that. Let me undo the filter here just to show you the difference. So right now, if we go into View, I have 57 students that I can see. If I click on Teacher, I have the ability to choose up to three different teachers' data. I can scroll and I can see data for those 57 students. If I right click on a blank area in my report, go to Report Settings, and if I add that email filter that I've just created, you'll now notice that I only have 19 students. The data that I have only shows 19 students, and now I only have access to Teacher 1 because that happens to be the teacher's information that's associated with my current email address. Once you share the link of the report with someone else, they will be able to go on and see the information that's associated with them as well. So this particular person is able to see all of the emails, all of the information because they are an administrator. So each person will have a different view depending on what access, level of access that you give them. Let me show you what the data source looks like just so you know how to set up your data on the back end. Inside of my data source, I have my general information such as an ID number, a student name, grade level, etc., which teacher is associated. And then I have this column here, mine happens to be column J, where I have these emails. As you can see, there are multiple emails within each row of data. Some have two email addresses, some have several email addresses. Uh, the number of email addresses, based on my experience, uh, it doesn't matter. I've had up to 20 email addresses associated to some rows of data, and it so far has been fine. So once you have this set up, this is your column that you will use to create your calculated field inside of Data Studio in order to get your email level filter reports. Thanks for watching. You can find out more at smithvisualizations.com.